It is June 26, 1997, backstage on the Lincoln Center Plaza in New York City. And it's a night of dreams. The Savoy Ballroom and the Lindy Hoppers are off in the distance. Norma Miller's out there. She knows that scene. And I'm seated right now with one of the band members helping to propel dancers in the 90s into the year 2000. Earl May, it is so good to see you again. Earl is the bassist in this band. So great to see you. I haven't seen you in years and years and years. And I tell you, you really made me happy to see you, to be here with you now. Yeah. It's a pleasure for me as well. Earl, uh, let's catch up uh, on your career and, and your art form behind that bass uh, uh, of bow and pluck. <laughs> I, I've been, uh, well, when I knew you, we, I was with Billy Taylor, and that uh, lasted until uh, the end of the end of the 50s. In about 1960, I formed a group behind a girl by the name of Gloria Lynn, and we, we traveled for about six or seven years and did very, very well. And then I started freelancing. And I oh well before that I, you know I had a chance to play with Charlie Parker and Miles Davis and um, God and Dizzy then, well this I'm ahead, ahead of myself but in the 70s I played with uh, Dizzy and I traveled halfway around the world and that was a wonderful wonderful experience something I'll never forget in my life you know what a great man he was you know if I uh, might expand on a little bit uh, when you worked with Dizzy you must have gone through a life learning experience it unbelievable was. exactly it, that's exactly what it was too uh, you know he he wherever whatever country we were in or wherever we were on this in this planet I should say we were very very much at home I remember once we went to South America and as soon as we got there he wanted to go right out and get with the uh, uh, these they call them the school of drums you know, where they dance in the street and they, you know, and this thing and that. And he was saying, Earl, Earl, save me, because he was dancing and putting so much energy. He said, and Homer says, I'm gonna have a heart attack, I'm gonna have a heart attack. But he just couldn't stop, you know, the, the music is so strong, you know. And it was just, uh, it's just so wonderful to be there and Israel and Europe and every every place, you know. And if I had to go around the world, that's the guy to go with, boy, because he's, he really make it, everybody around him feel really wonderful and warm. There's no language barriers or anything like that. He just, you know, true leader. What a wonderful memory. Uh, the uh, experience when I first met you with Billy Taylor really was, uh, was that a breakthrough, a beginning, or was it? Yes, it was. Yeah, that was, that was it, you know, because actually I, I owe Billy Taylor everything because he, he really put me on the right track. You know, he says, uh, I think what you need, because I was so raw, so young, so raw, <laughs> And uh, he, he said, I think you, you, you know, if you could took a couple of bass lessons, <laughs> you would do yourself some good. So he introduced me to Charles Mingus, and I studied with Mingus, for, and Mingus was so, oh, just so great to me, man. He really put me really on the right track, you know, and, uh, and you know, it's just that I, I'm unable to keep up with the studying part of, the, of, you know, what you really have to do every day because I'm so busy. But, uh, and I lack it. I mean, I can tell it in my playing. But maybe you might not be able to, I can tell that I could. Uh, so. Earl, you're a modest man, I know. Uh, that, uh, that experience with Charlie Parker, that was, boy, that was a window of opportunity and I imagine a challenge. It was, it really was. You know, we went down to Baltimore and played at a place called the Comedy Club in, in Baltimore. It was oh, just for a week, you know, and. Uh, um, let's see who was in Wade Leggy was do you remember Wade Leggy and uh, the piano player I mean the drummer was a, the son of a, a Brian the tr the, I can't think of his name a trombone player that was in town had a young son who played and he played drums with us you know it was a really wonderful experience because uh, Idris Suleiman I saw Idris after we came back and he, he told me he said you know I was hanging out with Charlie and the other day and he said you know I was playing with this young bass player this is Char this is bird telling Idris this you know and Idris is telling me this and I was on cloud nine when he says what I didn't know that uh, bird even heard what I was you know I mean he's had to such great musicians with him you know but he was very he said I had a wonderful experience playing with this young bass player and he really sounded great so really, that's something I've been riding on for a long time 
Well, as you look at these years, it's 1997. Would you do it uh, again? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I had a glorious career, and I've had a glorious career. I'm very happy to, you know, God's really been good to me, and well, I have to say that, you know, yeah. I've been talking with Earl May, and Earl through the years. <laughs> so great to see you again. You know? Great to see you too. Here we are on a beautiful night. The humidity is down and the sky has just transformed to the real nocturnal look. And we're seated in an unlikely setting in one of the biggest cities in the world. People are dancing outdoors to a big band and it's all in the tradition of swing. We're in Lincoln Center Plaza, uptown in New York, around 63rd Street and uh, the landscape is beautiful and the architecture is great and Earl May the music is even better. Oh, thank, you. thank you. I'm having a great time. I'm so glad I took I put I, I uh, was supposed to play with Billy you know in paying tribute to um, I think it was Jack Kleinsinger where there was a bunch of us that had, and uh, I, I gave that up and I gave another gig up with Frank Forster to just to be here tonight with you know so I'm very happy that I did that. <laughs> Thanks very much, Romain. Thank you.